Okay, so I decided to make another rebar knife. Uh, I wanted to make a little tiny sort of stiletto type thing, but unfortunately I couldn't find any small rebar. All I've got is some more of this three quarter. Not the same as the other one I used for my last knife, but it's still the same size. It rings quite nicely for a bit of old rubbish, which is what people seem to think it is. Anyway, uh, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with it. Um, whether it's going to turn out sort of more daggery like the last one, or whether it's going to be more sort of traditional bladey. I'm going to start off, I'm going to try and keep that seam running right through the middle so that it's symmetrical. I'll tell you what, for old rubbish this is tough stuff. It's the second time I've used rebar and it is it is tough. I know people say it's rubbish but who'd build a block of flats with a rubbish reinforcing? I don't think I'd be too keen if it was a rough old took holding the place up. Anyway, that's by the by. All I know is it's tough to work. So I'm just... I've got no real plan. I'm sort of doing this as I go along. I've now decided, like that instant, that it's going to be one-sided, not like a dagger. So I'm going to start rounding it off towards the, the tip. I say it's really tough stuff. I know my shoulders aren't up to much these days, but I can still shift a bit of metal. Right, we're sort of getting towards what I'm looking at, but I want it to be a little bit bigger. And this time I want to try and make the blade actually quite thin. Um, the blade on the rebar dagger was actually pretty thick. Um, well, that didn't really matter. But this one I want to make a little bit uh, daintier, perhaps. A little less chunky. Yeah, that's a pretty big hammer I'm using and it's not moving an awful lot of metal but I'm going to try and draw that point out now get a bit more length into it I'm going to keep it this sort of shape, sort of a rounded bottom to it um, I'm not sure yet if I'm going to keep the, the spine straight or whether I'm going to sort of drop the point on it. Um, quite often when I make a knife and I keep the uh, spine straight it ends up being dropped because I bugger the point up. So I have to drop the point to, to uh, make it a point again. And we'll see what happens this time. This fire is still old rubbish coal that I'm using. Really dirty. Or coke actually, it's coke, not coal. We're getting there. It's coming. I'm trying to keep it down the middle as well. Um, that's always a little bit tricky at times. Um, going on to the smaller hammer now. So we're getting towards the the end of it. Oh, my little spider's back. There he is. He seems to like it when I'm working on the forge. He likes to play dangerously. He's getting awfully close to uh, a hot bit of metal. Right, I'm going to get the guillotine tool out now because I want to just define um, where the blade finishes and where the handle starts. At the moment it's a little bit um, vague. So I'm just going to try and square it up. I'm using the square dies in it this time rather than the rounded ones I used the other day. I'm just trying to define the lines a little bit. I'll probably end up filing them anyway but 
if I can hammer them in to start with. It might help a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. That's sort of defined the two edges. Now I'm going to do something with the handle. I'm not quite sure what. I want to put a bit of a bend in it. Before we go anywhere near the handle, I'm going to grind it up a bit because it's obviously much easier hanging on to a two foot lump of bar than a sort of five inch lump of bar. Ow, that caught up. Made me jump. Um, so yeah, I'm leaving the the uh, the excess on there at the moment while I give it a bit of a grind. I'm starting off with a fairly coarse grit. I've got 36 grit in here at the moment. I'm going to just take the worst of it off. Perhaps I could have done the worst of it on my big six inch grinder, but I didn't really think of that. You see my cup of uh, sparks has filled up already, that was empty when I started. getting there. It's coming down. As I say, I want it reasonably thin this time. I've changed belts. Um, these are real nasty. They've got a real lump in these belts so I'm resisting doing too much on the, the platen because you can see that's much nicer. That's a 120, that great. Um, yeah, resisting doing too much on the platen because it, it's such a jump in it that it often will catch and just snap the blade, uh, the, the uh, belt straight in half. Right, just going to do a little bit of hand filing now. Um, again, defining these uh, joins between the handle and the blade. Just putting a little bit of a hand finish on. Now, I've just noticed there's some nasty lines appearing. And I think it's this file is picking up bits and it's really putting some nasty scores in it. This is a brand new file, but it's doing it again. Look, there they are. Tiny little bits are getting stuck on there, and they're putting some really nasty gashes in the in the blade. I think they'll file out or sand out, but I don't know why it's doing it. As I say, this is a brand new file. Really nice, sharp bit of kit, and it's a good make. It's a Nicholson. I wouldn't have expected it to do that but anyway that's I'm gonna leave it like that for now till we've got the handle finished so I'm gonna work out how much I need in my hand uh, and I'm gonna put a bit of a shape in it so let's go and work that out right I've worked it out just by feel really that it wants to be about that long that fits my hand nicely now I might put a pommel on the end of it like I did with the uh, rebar dagger but I'm not sure yet we'll see, let's get this cut off and put some shape in it right I've had to modify some tongs to hold this 
because the blade's in the way. It's a bit tricky. So I think I'm going to change my mind about the pommel on the end because I think it's going to take too much uh, difficulty to hold it without damaging the blade. So I, what I'm going to do is just flatten the end out. That's about the sort of shape I'm looking for. I'm just literally just going to do that on the end. Just sort of finish it off like that. But see already I've... Well, look at that, it's gone like a banana, and I'm a little bit unsure about straightening it. I don't know how hard this stuff is. I know everybody says it's rubbish, but I s certainly have my doubts as to how rubbish it is. So, just warmed it up again. I'm just gently straighten that up. That's better. I'll leave that sort of like that and then try and find some tongs to hold it the other way now I want to hold it sideways across there these won't really do it no that's not ideal let me go and see if I can find some better tongs while that warms up right I found some Just gonna put a not a massive slope on it, but a little bit of a taper. And I'm gonna drill it and put a lanyard hole through it. I think that'll just finish it off quite nicely. So I'm just putting a bit of a fish tail on here. It'll um, almost sort of round itself out. Just trying to keep it up the centre. too bad, just eyeballing it. Eyeball it the other way. It wants to twist round just a touch to stay up the centre. Well, I think that's about it. So I'm going to leave that to cool on its own. I'm not going to cool it out and uh, then we'll drill it and then we'll clean it up. So I'm going to start with a pilot. I'll put a little centre dot in there. Start at an angle and then bring it up straight. I'm going to put about just over a quarter inch hole, I think. I think this is actually a 7.5mm drill. I was using it for some railings. They're going to be powder coated and I want to put some 6mm bolts through so I thought a 7.5mm drill would just about do it. That's the powder coatings on there. It's going to catch up, I can just tell. A bit of grip. Yeah, I knew it would. There we go. going to put a little countersink in there just to uh, finish it off so got no sharp edges Right, I'm going to do what I wouldn't normally do with rebar, but I've had so many people say to me on my last video, oh, why didn't you harden it? Well, people say it's rubbish steel, you can't harden it. So just to prove it, one way or the other, I'm going to try hardening it and see what happens. So we'll just get this up to critical. I've got my oil tank open. And we'll see what happens. It's, I think it's pretty... Similar to, to basic mild steel, 
Um, although it, it has seemed very tough to work, I think the um, the properties are, are pretty much like mild steel. Which, to be fair, you can slightly harden because there is so much carbon in ordinary mild steel these days. If you get it to orange and like that critical and uh, quench it, you can make a, a sort of like a spring fuller. There's just enough in there. So I'm not expecting miracles with this. But we'll see what happens. Let it drip dry for a minute. Just going to leave it there to cool out for a second. Get the oil, burn the oil off of my tongs. Right, let's see what happens. No, it's no, it's not hard. Not like it would be with a bit of carbon, proper carbon steel. So while it's, I've got it here. I'm just going to take a little bit off the spine. You know what I said about my point. Well, I've buggered the point a little bit, so I'm just going to drop the point back down and tidy it up a bit, and then we're going to clean it up. So I'll get my wire brush on it. So that's wire brushed up, got all the um, scale off from the oil. And you can see that's running quite nicely down the centre. I'm really pleased with that. A natural seam. So now I'm just going to put it on the buffer. See if we can shine it up a little bit more. This is um, like a t Scotch Bright type wheel. Um, if you look on my Amazon page, which I'll put uh, a link to in the description, you can buy them on there. They're 180 grit, and they're really good for this type of thing. They take a lot of scale off. They shine stuff, and I can even use them for sharpening my farrier's knives. Just putting a that really fine edge on. Um, yeah, they're. they're Pretty handy. They come in. They start off at about six inches. Run down to about four by now. They're about an inch wide. Um, and they're dead handy. Out. That's hot. <laughs> I'm just giving it a light go over the actual rebar part. I don't want it too shiny on the rebar part. There we go. Just shined it up a little bit. And just left the actual handle part of it quite dull. I don't like them too shiny. You know, like mirror. I just like a little bit of a satin finish to it. Proportions wise, I'm slightly disappointed. I think the handle was a little bit too long, but it needed to be that long to get my hand in. So I think the blade could have been just a touch longer, really. Now it has got an edge on it. I put a, a little edge on it, but how long it will stay on there, I don't know. Let's try and cut some paper, but this paper has been in here for ages and it's a little bit damp. So it's not brilliant. Well, it's sort of tearing it because it is so damp. But it is cutting it. It's difficult to cut damp paper. That's just going to tear. Yeah, this has been in here that long. This is a pattern. Oh, can't. It's not going to work. Yeah, there we go. Look, it's cutting it. This is a pattern uh, for that horse's head I did a long while ago. So it's been in here that long. It's that damp. Anyway, there it is. Here's my spider again running around. He's, he likes the old anvil. There you go. Another one for the the uh, the box. Not brilliant, but something different, different from my last one. A little project. Pleased with that spine running up the middle. I thought that was going to go well haywire. So thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.